Hi kids, it's Miss Leslie. I miss your faces. I wish I could see you right now. Um, welcome to virtual Sunday school. I, I never thought I'd say that, but boy, I'm saying virtual a lot more lately. Today is Valentine's Day. You probably already know that because you probably had a Valentine's party in your class at school on Friday. And maybe you exchanged little Valentine cards like this one. Number one Valentine. <laughs> Did you do that? I remember doing that. Um, I bet you didn't mean all the little sayings that were on these little cards that you gave to your schoolmates. You know, like I bet the kid who sits next to you might not be your number one Valentine, <laughs> right? They're just little funny words. But um, love is what we're going to talk about today. And Valentine's Day is all about love. So what is love? We really throw around that word a lot, don't we? I love pizza. I love watching Toy Story. Uh, I hope you say, I love coming to church. So we use that word a lot. You know, when I was a kid, um, there was this band called DC Talk. Do you know about them? DC Talk uh, had Toby Mac in it. So to you might know Toby Mac, he's still making music. Um, anyway, they sang this song called, Love is a Verb. You need to tell Alexa to play that later because it's, it's a fun song. Love is a verb. What does that mean? What was DC Talk trying to tell us? Love is a verb. What's a verb? A verb is an action word, right? It's jump, bounce, kick. Um, so an action word. If love is a verb, what does that mean? That it has action, okay? Um, love isn't just something we say, it's something we do. Think about that. It's not just a word you say, I love. It's something you do. Let's take a look in the scriptures at one passage where Jesus is showing us, he's demonstrating love, showing us how to do love, okay? If you don't already have your Bible, pause me and go get it, okay? Open up to the book of John. I got my Bible here, and I already opened up to the book of John. Remember, New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then comes Acts. So John, the Gospel of John is between Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke, and Acts, okay? Flip to that, chapter 13, and we're going to start reading in verse 1 of chapter 13, okay? I want you to take your little finger and put it on verse 1 in chapter 13 and read along with me. I'm reading from the NIV, okay? So your Bible, your Bible might be an ESV or a different version, but it'll be similar, okay? So follow along with me as I start with verse one, and I'm gonna read through 17. Here we go. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that, had been wrapped, that was wrapped around him. Verse 6, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't, do not realize what I am doing. You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. 
Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has, ha has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him and that, that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Jesus, thank you for your example. Pray that you would help us as we study your word today, that we would learn what it means to love to love in action, not just in word, but in deed as well. Be with each of these little people and big people who are listening to this. I pray that you would use it to glorify yourself. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's dive into our passage. When was this? Did you see at the beginning of the chapter? It's just before the Passover. Remember Passover? So Passover had happened many, many years before this, but they were still celebrating the Passover feast. So Passover was that time when the Israelites still lived in Egypt because they were slaves to the Egyptians. And God said, paint the, the lamb's blood over your door, your doorpost and I will pass over, the shadow of death, the, the angel of death will pass over anyone with the blood over their doorpost. So the angel of death came and many, many Egyptian firstborn sons died, but no one's firstborn son died who had that lamb's blood painted over their doorpost. Remember that? It was an amazing miracle. And God told the people of Israel that many, many years ago, that they should always celebrate the Passover meal together to remember that great miracle. So that's what's just about to happen, the Passover feast that they celebrated every year. So it's just about Passover feast and Jesus is about to go to the cross, okay? So that's when this is happening. Look at the end of verse one. Did you see that key word that we're talking about today? He showed them, he now showed them the full extent of his love, love. So what's the full extent of his love? He's about to show it to them and he washes their feet. So washing feet, that's love. Let's, let's think about that a little bit. Feet are dirty, aren't they? I mean, Think about the time when Jesus lived. Feet must have been really dirty because most everybody was wearing sandals and it was dusty and dusty roads, dirt roads. They walked everywhere. It was just a dirty world, you know? So it's all over your feet. And it was the servant's job to wash people's feet. The lowest task. I mean, a servant did that. But here Jesus is doing that. You know, when I was a teenager, my big sister had this boyfriend and she, I knew she must love him because one night he was over at our house and she was clipping his toenails. Ew, how gross is that? I remember I was sitting there watching it and I thought to myself, she must really love him. That must be what love is, because I could not think of one boy that I would want to clip his toenails. Gross. <laughs> Feet are dirty. So, uh, by the way, that boy that she was clipping his toenails became her husband. <laughs> so, that was love, wasn't it? 
But Jesus is saying, he's gonna show them the full extent of his love, and then he washes their feet. Now, did you see Peter's reaction? He doesn't want Jesus to wash his feet. Why? Why doesn't he want Jesus to wash his feet? Well, Jesus, Peter knows, is the Messiah, the Son of God. God himself has come down to be with the people. He's Jesus. And Jesus is going to kneel down and wash Simon's, Simon Peter's dirty feet. No, no, no. Simon Peter doesn't want him to wash his feet because he thinks, no, that's a job for a servant. I should wash your feet. You should not wash my feet, Lord. But then Jesus, did you see? Jesus says to him, look at uh, verse, verse 7. Jesus says, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you'll understand. And Jesus, uh, Peter's like, no, no, don't wash my feet. And Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. You know, Jesus has to cleanse us from our sins. That's how we're saved. So he's using this water as an example of you've got to be cleansed to be my child. But he knows that there's someone in the room who isn't clean. Who is it? Look at verse 10 and 11. A person has had a bath, who has had a bath, needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. Are you, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. He's talking about Judas, isn't he? He knows Judas is about to betray him. So, look at verse 10 and 11. Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. Finally, Peter says, you know, if you got, if you're gonna wash my feet, just wash all of me. Jesus says, no, no, I just need to wash your feet. Um, and then he's showing him, he's showing all of them what it means to love one another. Let's look at the reason that Jesus does this. He explains it in verse 12 to 17. So, he finishes washing their feet, and then this is what he says. Do you understand what I have done for you? And they're probably like, not really. I mean, you wash my feet, but I don't really understand. So then he explains it because that's, he's just a loving, a loving Lord, isn't he? He explains it to them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. Okay, so we're supposed to do what he did. Verse 15, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So we're supposed to follow Jesus' example. We're supposed to be like Jesus. Love is a verb. Love is humbly serving others. Love is a verb. It's an action. Jesus showed them his love by doing, getting down on his knees and washing their dirty feet. A servant's job. The Messiah did a servant's job. That's love. How can you show love today? How can you take what we've just read in this Bible and do it? Because James says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We're not supposed to read the Bible and then walk away and forget about it. We're supposed to be doers of the word. Love is an action word. So how can you show love today? What if you give your daddy a back scratch? I bet he would love that. That would show him love. What if you offer to get your brother a drink when you're in the kitchen? Would that be loving? What if you leave your mom a little love note? Maybe a post-it note, you could stick it to her bathroom mirror so she'd see it later. 
this week, I want you to look for ways to show love, okay? Look for ways to show love. Let someone else be the line leader, even though you got there first. Give your dessert away to a friend at lunchtime. Pick up after your sister. <laughs> that would show love, wouldn't it? Do your chores without being asked. I know, I'm a mama. That would show your mama love. Look for ways to love on the people around you. Look for ways to love people, even at school, that maybe don't have as many friends as you. Look out for that person. Go sit by them. Talk to them. Ask how they are doing. That is love. I have a memory verse for us. I'm going to walk, walk us over to my board over here. Okay? So the memory verse comes from a little bit later in that same chapter. It is John 13, 34b. That just means the second part of the verse. Okay, look at the verse. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. John 13, 34b. Let's, let's say it in a whisper now. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must also, so you must love one another. <laughs> Miss Leslie messed it up. Okay, now let's say it really loud. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. John 13, 34b. Okay, I got a challenge for you. If you memorize that verse and you get your mom or dad or grandparent to video you saying that memory verse and they email it to me, then I will find a little treat to reward you, okay? So, memory verse challenge. I haven't done one of those in a long time. John 13, 34b. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Okay, and I'm gonna work on it too. I gotta memorize it too. All right, remember love is a verb. Jesus showed the ultimate love for us when he died on the cross. He forgave us of our sins. And if we believe in him, then we are wrapped up in his righteousness. We have his record of perfection. He loved us so much, he would die for us. Love is a verb. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope I get to see you soon. Bye.